Because the theme of the sixth Sunday of the Trinity is baptism. And the watchword is from Isaiah 43, verse 1. This is what the Lord says, He who created you, He who formed you, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. My prayer is that this series, this, these services will be a blessing to all of us and that we will experience that the Lord is calling us and is blessing us. Lord, we thank you that we can celebrate this service in your name. Amen.
Psalms 139 verses 1 to 12. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I arise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you call, and like you called your disciples one by one and you called them by name, we believe that you also call us, each one of us, by name. And therefore we pray that in this service we will once again hear your wonderful voice and have the courage to listen up and to follow. This we pray to you who lives and reigns, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God in all eternity. Amen. Old Testament reading taken from Isaiah 43 verses 1 to 7. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through fire, you will not be burned, and the flames will not set you ablaze. For I am Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your stead. Since you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made.
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the dead, and the life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Lord, we thank you that we can hear your word once again. Strengthen us through what we hear. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers, I read the sermon text from Matthew 28, verse 16 to 20. The eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw Jesus, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. A wonderful text, very well known. There's one little half sentence that very often gets overlooked. Three words in this English translation. But some doubt it. These three words have become very important to me. Especially in these times of uncertainty, where one day we can celebrate services and just the next day we are told, sorry, the coronavirus is too strong again. No longer gather in churches. Where one moment it looks as if we're moving forward and the next moment we are told, isolate, distance yourself. Where I want to be joyful and praise the Lord and worship Him. But somehow deep down there's this doubt. What's going to happen? Where are we? Where are we heading to? Well, I'm saying I'm glad that it says so here. Because if these disciples who were with Jesus for three years and who stand in front of Him, who see Him, they, some of them still doubt, then I realize it's okay to doubt. Actually, when we think of the readings that we have heard so far on this Sunday, Psalm 139 speaks about that we are surrounded by God, that He's all over. But have you noticed that the second half of the psalm has a different tone? It's almost as if the psalmist is in depression, speaking out of depths, of darkness, of, of difficult times. Because the psalmist, looking back at his life, knows that there were times that were just terrible. And only in hindsight, looking back, he says, and even there, you were there. Or think of the watchword for today. We heard it at the beginning. From Isaiah 43, do not be, be afraid, I have called you by name, you are mine. It's so wonderful, but have you noticed how does it start? Do not be afraid. And that means that this word is spoken to people who live in fear, who are doubting, who are not sure whether God is indeed with them. Yes, doubt is part of our lives. And today this text from the New Testament saying that some disciples doubted is a wonderful text to me telling me the disciples were like you and me, normal people who needed to be 
lifted up by Jesus. From this text, I want to take three thoughts. And I've got this candle here that has got four wicks. And I'm going to light one wick for each thought. The first one, this little flame here, is the light speaking about the assurance that God gives, the promise that He gives. The psalmist speaks about this when he says, you were there, you know me, you've been there all the time, you go with me. Before I can think something, you already know it. It's an assurance, a promise that He takes from God. Well, I think of Isaiah 43, this assurance repeated many times over when we hear all six verses, I will be with you, I will guide you, I am there, I will hold you, you are mine, a wonderful assurance. And in the gospel reading, we heard it in Matthew 28, where Jesus starts off by saying, all authority in heaven and on earth is given to me. Now this Lord of authority says to his disciples, and surely I am with you always. The wonderful thing about the assurance of God is that it is given at the beginning, that it is our foundation. The assurance is not the end result of my faith. It is not the reward that I receive when I'm strong. The assurance is given to the disciples while they are doubting. The assurance is given to the Israelites while they are afraid. The assurance is right at the beginning. And Jeremiah, the prophet, hears it that, that the Lord says to him, Even before you were conceived, I had already known you. Even before my life started, the assurance called by name was already given. Today I mentioned that we have the theme baptism. And baptism is this assurance given to me, spoken to me. I have called you by name. You are mine. And that assurance is not the end result of my strong faith, but it's the beginning of the journey. In our tradition when we baptize babies, become so clear this is the beginning of a journey right at the beginning the Lord says you are mine and even those who baptize at a later stage the baptism is not the end it's the beginning it's this proclamation that the Lord says I have called you you are mine I am with you this assurance is what carries us it's not that we get it when we do not doubt. No. The assurance carries us when we are doubting. It carries us through when we don't see the way ahead. That I know that I hear that the Lord is there. And that brings me to the second week that I want to light. Jesus, in this passage, says to the disciples, Therefore go and teach the people. The second week is about learning. Because this assurance needs to be learned. What I mean by that is, I forget. As I said, the disciples were walking with Jesus for three years. And standing in front of him, they doubt. Because doubt is so deeply part of our lives. And I need to learn what Jesus has taught. I need to learn his promise. And I must admit that we as church failed miserably in this regard. All too often we baptize babies and then just leave them. They grow up never knowing that they belong to Christ. We confirmed children and sent them into the world and they never learn to live as Christians. Learning means 
I learn to hear this assurance, this promise of the Lord. I learn to discover it in my daily life. And that gives me strength. And I don't only learn it in confirmation class. No. The most important place where I learn about this is in the Bible. Now in my getting around through our congregations, I love to ask the question, how many of you read in the Bible daily? And I'm glad to say that many people are honest enough to not put up their hand. I'm glad to say they are honest enough. But I'm sad to see how many people don't make it a habit of reading in the Bible. Reading in the Bible is like eating. You don't eat to please someone. Yes, sometimes we do, okay. But normally we eat because we need it. We need the food to give us strength. We need scripture. We need the daily reading. Why? So that we can discover this assurance for ourselves. That so that we can eat, so that we can taste that the Lord is good. And as we read through the Bible, you will be amazed how often it will speak to you into your daily situation, into your concrete situation and tell you, I am there. Remember, I who have called you by name, I am there. I will not abandon you. Dear sister, dear brother, I encourage you to really make a point of reading the Bible on a daily basis. It's for your own good. It's not to please God, but it's because God wants to please you. He wants to strengthen you. And that brings me to the third wick in this candle. speaks to the part where Jesus in Matthew 28 says, And teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. Now this is not a call into a legalistic life, into living, obeying commandments. This speaks to being a disciple. A disciple is someone who follows, who radiates Christ through their lives. That is what we are called to. We hear the assurance, your mind. We learn to discover it for ourselves. And now it wants to transform our lives so that Christ becomes visible through us. Coronavirus is highly infectious. And many people have died because of it. And many are suffering as a with the consequences of being ill. Christianity is highly contagious, but the end result is not death. The end result is life, is joy, is the realization, I am called, I am special, I am loved. And we are called to live this contagious Christian life. It doesn't happen by us talking to other people and telling them, how bad they are and that they must turn around. It happens through us living Christ. What does that mean? It does not mean that I'm not doubting. It means that I admit to being a doubter and then can testify how the Lord still carried me. That I can cry with others and others can cry with me and we can pray to the Lord and be comforted. Being a witness to Christ does not mean that I'm without a mistake. If we look at the lives of the disciples, they made so many mistakes. Being a witness to Christ means to be able to say, I made a mistake. I'm sorry, please forgive me. And more important, being a witness to Christ means to say to someone who has heard me, I forgive you, just as Christ forgives me. That is where Christianity becomes contagious, not when we are blameless, but when in our faults the love of Christ becomes visible. 
went through our lives with all their mistakes, the love of Christ radiates and forgiveness shines and care shines. I hear the assurance I'm called by name. I learn to discover it in the Bible every day, discover it myself. And I learn to live as a follower of Christ. Now I want to invite the fourth week. It's in the middle. I said that the assurance, the promise of Christ is at the beginning. And in, Acts, uh, in Matthew 28, you also read it right at the end. And surely I am with you. And I want to say, I am surrounded by my good Lord. I start off with the baptism, baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Surrounded, and it's me in the middle, surrounded by Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Kept in Him. Kept safe in Him. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. And I am His. I am surrounded. And I am surrounded by His assurance. I am surrounded by Him daily reminding me. And I am strengthened so that I can live to His glory. Today, we are hearing it once again. Or perhaps for the first time, you are called by name. Christ is your Lord. You are kept in His grace. You may live. His assurance stands at the beginning of your life. And His assurance will carry you through up to the end of times. Amen. Lord, we thank You that You surround us. As the psalmist have said, has said, wherever we are, you are there. And as you, Jesus Christ, have promised, till the end of times, you are there. Thank you that I can hear you calling me. Thank you that I belong. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Lord God, our Heavenly Father, you are our creator. You formed each one of us in our mother's womb and you placed us on this earth to experience blessings and to share these generously. You ask of us to keep your word, to love mercy and to walk humbly before you. So we pray this morning that you continue to guide us, your church, in your word, in your love and in humility. We bring to you this morning our country, our country hard hit by a third COVID wave, our country split into conflicting political camps, our country struggling with economic growth, our country searching for a way forward through a separated past. Lord, as we cry to you for our beloved country, we pray that you guide our leaders to act justly, to renew in your church hearts that love mercy and to keep us all humble as we walk before you, our God. Give guidance and wisdom to all who have been called to lead through this time in history. Give courage to those who have lost hope and give hope to those who have lost courage. Continue to shine your light of truth within us, your church, and let your church reflect this light into all the small places where you have placed us. <clears throat> let us shine your light in our, in your beloved country. Amen. And now, receive the blessing of the Lord and go in peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>